Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another audio programmer tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to help you get your developer environment set up. If you're working on Mac OS and not quite sure what tools and applications that you need to download to get started as an audio programmer. I've got a factory reset on this MacBook Pro that we're going to be using today. So the experience and the way that you install these applications should be very similar no matter what OS that you might be working on, whether it's on a Intel or a Silicon Mac. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know about the resources and services we have for you here at The Audio Programmer. Whether you'd like to learn about audio programming yourself through our books and community, looking for developers or advice through our recruitment and consulting services, or would like us to create a plugin for you through our development services, we offer all things audio programming. Come visit us at theaudioprogrammer.com to find out more. And without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so the first tool that we're going to install on our Mac is called Git. Git is a way that we can not only save our own development work, but also be able to make that development work accessible for other developers to be able to work on our project as well. The way that we're going to do this on our Mac is using the command line. If you're not familiar with the command line, the great news is that it's already installed on your Mac. All you have to do is go over to your little magnifying glass there and type in terminal and there's a terminal application that's already installed on your Mac and it will pull up something like this. Now, if you're looking at this and feeling a little bit uneasy, that's a very common feeling and don't worry, once you know a couple of the basic commands, you'll be up and flying in no time. Uh, so just follow along here, follow exactly what I do and you will be just fine. The first thing that we're going to do is see if Git is actually installed on this Mac already. And the way that we're gonna do this is using the command git g it and then dash dash version okay so make sure that you just type it just like that make sure nothing is capitalized and what we're going to do is we're going to hit enter and see if we have git on our mac already and we can see a response here that says no developer tools were found uh, choose an option in the dialog to download the list of command line developer tools so what's really cool about Mac and working on Mac is that it actually is very friendly towards developers. And we see that there's this prompt that has popped up for me that says, the Git command requires the command line developer tools. Would you like to install the tools now? And so we're going to go ahead and hit install. Okay, then it's gonna bring us to some prompts and it's gonna find the software. And now it's going to go ahead and start downloading the software that we need for Git and the command line developer tools. And I will come back when that is finished. Okay, so now we just got done with that installation and we should have Git installed now. So if we type Git dash dash version again, we see that we now have Git. Now actually using Git is a whole set of tutorials in itself, but at least we have it installed now, so we have the basics down. Okay, so the next tool that we're going to download is called Xcode. Xcode is an IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. For now, we can think of it as the place where you write your code, even though it is a little bit more than that. So the way that we're going to download Xcode is using the app store. Uh, I just typed Xcode into the search prompt and here I have Xcode and I'm just going to hit download here. And then what's going to happen is it's asking me to download an older version of Xcode because I'm an, on an older uh, Mac OS here. So I'm just going to hit download and that's going to take a while to download. Uh, but while it's doing that, I'm going to explain. So Xcode is a place where we can write our C++ code. So C++ is a coding language that is still the most common way that we write software for what we call real-time audio. Real-time audio roughly is defined as the type of applications that we where we want an immediate reaction. So things like DJ applications, DAWs, audio plugins, things like that are mostly 
written using C++. And Xcode is the most common place that C++ code is actually written when you're using Mac OS, even though there are other tools that are available as well. So I will come back once Xcode is finished downloading. Okay, so Xcode has finished downloading and we can just open it up here for the first time. We'll just do a little test project, make sure that everything is actually working correctly. So it's opening now. I'm gonna go ahead and close this app store. A couple things to agree to. I need to type in my password. And then here it just asks what operating systems or what platforms that we're going to be creating apps for. So I'll just put iOS and Mac OS for now. We'll hit install. Now it's going to install some more stuff and I will be back once that is finished. Okay, so those additional components were installed and now we'll just go ahead and see if we can create a quick C++ project to get running. And here we go. So we're in the standard Xcode start menu here. We'll create a new project. And then hopefully I can remember how to actually do this. So we're going to create one for Mac OS and this is going to be a command line tool. And then we're going to hit next. And hopefully I can remember how to do this basic project. And the language we want is C++. For organization identifier, I will just put blah for now. We're just testing this out. I'm just gonna put this on the desktop for now. Okay, now this should just give us a basic hello world. So we haven't connected up our Git repository or anything like that. I'm just gonna hit cancel. I normally don't do that through Xcode anyway. And then here we go to our main window here, and then we're just going to hit build. We just hit build by, uh, by hitting this play button up here in the left-hand corner. And we see build succeeded. And then it says hello world down here at the bottom. So we see that everything is working properly. So now I'm just going to take this, right click on it, hit keep in dock. So that's now part of our developer tools here. And now we will move on to the next tool that we're going to install. Okay, so the next tool that we're going to download is called Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Make sure that you don't mix this up with Microsoft Visual Studio because those are two very different things. What we want is Visual Studio Code. And you should see a screen like this. And we'll go ahead and we will hit download. And this will be pretty quick. So one of the great things about Visual Studio Code is it's very lightweight and you can actually do uh, all your software development in Visual Studio Code if you have a little bit of, of know-how of how to do it. Uh, but the main reason that we are downloading Visual Studio Code is to write C major code. So C major is a new domain specific language that's just for audio and it's really fast and it helps avoid a lot of the complexity that you normally get with writing uh, DSP code and real-time audio code with C++. And the aim of it is to be a lot easier than C++. So that's why we're downloading Visual Studio Code uh, for now. So I've put Visual Studio Code in my applications folder and I'm going to open it here. And then it's pretty quick to open and you want to hit open here. And as always, we're just going to keep this in the dock. And I will put this here right beside Xcode. So one of the really cool things about Visual Studio Code is that you have these extensions. So if you go to this left hand selection menu here down to the bottom, you have this section called extensions. And what I can do is I can just directly download the C major extension right here within 
Visual Studio Code. So C major. And see here, we have the C major tools. I'm just gonna click on this and then click on install and it's installing. And now I can just start writing C major code right from here. Uh, and there are tutorials on how to do that that I have here on the channel. I put the link to those in the description below. But now we have the ability to write C major um, C major code. And there are other things, there, there are other programming languages that you can uh, do here in Visual Studio Code as well. So you could do Python, you could do JavaScript. So a lot of people are starting to build their uh, user interfaces in JavaScript. You can actually even do your C++ code here in Visual Studio Code. It, it involves a little bit of configuration and it's a little bit more complex, but you can actually do it. Um, so yes, so that's, there's Visual Studio Code and C Major. And now we will go on to our next tool to download. Okay, the next tool that we're gonna download is one of the most popular ways that people build audio apps and plugins, which is called Juice. Juice is an audio programming framework that's written in C++, and it's a great way to get started in audio software development, and it's very popular. Many companies use it um, to develop their plugins and audio apps, and that's what we're gonna do now is install that. So you can actually do this if you're a little bit more experienced, you can do this via the GitHub repository. But for beginners, I'm going to go ahead and just download it from the website directly into a zip file. So that's a little bit easier if you're just starting off. And what I'm gonna do is just open up this zip file here. And that's gonna take a second to upload, and um, or to open rather. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this juice folder and I'm going to put it directly in the applications folder there. And then what I will do is I will go to the juice folder and I'm going to open the producer. So the producer is a project generator for juice and it's a great way to get started uh, in writing your C++ code and I actually have tutorials on how to get started with using the producer um, that are also in the channel and I will put a link to those. But for now, we're just going to um, set it here in our um, apps. I'm going to create very quickly a new project just to make sure that everything is running correctly. I'll call this new project. I'm going to create it. Like I said, I have a whole separate tutorial on how to do this that I will put in the description below. I'm going to put the project on my desktop. And then here we have a, um, a little warning that says the path to your juice folder is incorrect. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the juice path is correct and um, um, that so it needs to know where all of the libraries are and so I'm going to hit set path here and the place where I want to put those is um, right where I put all of the uh, all of the juice stuff that I downloaded which is here in this juice folder in my applications folder so I'm going to hit open there and then I'm going to do the same thing for juice modules. So that is here. I'm in the juice folder that I downloaded and I put in my applications folder. And now I'm just going to go to modules. I'm going to hit open there. And then that should be good to go. So now we're good to go. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and open this up in Xcode. Once again, I have a tutorial on how to do all of this separately on the channel that I'll show you and I'll walk you through a little bit more slowly, but we just wanna make sure that everything is building correctly. And I'm just gonna hit build. And now we got build failed. Okay, looks like what I needed to do is I just needed to close out Juice and reopen it for all of the libraries to show up properly. I'm sure there's a way to rescan that, but here we are. I'm just going to test this out, make sure that this is actually going to build our Juice project successfully. 
And like I said, I have a tutorial separately on this that I will link in this description below. And it's building now. Everything looks like it's going to work. Okay, we got build succeeded. So now we should see a window pop up here. Just waiting for it to come alive. And there it is. So that's your most basic Juice project. So Juice is now downloaded and installed correctly. And we've just built a new project. Okay, the last tool that we're going to install is not necessarily one that you'll need as a beginner, but you'll definitely need a little bit further down the line if you're writing C++ on a more serious level. And this is called CMake. CMake is what is called a build system. For now, think of a build system a little bit like what we have with the project generator for Juice called the ProJuicer, uh, where we were able to make some different configurations, add source files, um, you know, change settings, things like that. That's essentially what CMake is, but on a more expanded level. Um, so there's a way that you can actually download CMake via the website here, but to help make things simple, I'm actually going to install another tool called Homebrew. So Homebrew is what's called a package manager, and it's really amazing. Uh, it allows you to install um, a lot of handy tools, things like Python and so on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Homebrew first, then use Homebrew to install CMake. So to install Homebrew, I'm just going to take this command here. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to open up my terminal, and I'm going to paste it in, and just hit Enter. Okay, now it's going to ask for my password. And... Now I'm going to just hit enter again. And now it's installing Homebrew and this may take a second or it may be very quick. Okay, so now Homebrew is installed and what I can do now is I can use Homebrew to install CMake. So the way that I will do this is using the command brew install CMake. And now it's going to do that. Okay, so it looks like CMake has been installed correctly. And the way that I can now see that uh, this has been installed is by just typing CMake dash dash version. And now we see that we have a CMake version that's been installed. So now CMake is installed. And when you're ready to use that down the line as your next superpower that will be available to you. Okay, so those are some of the basic tools that you will need to get started with audio programming on your Mac. Now, I know that was quite a bit, and if you felt like you got stuck or you have any questions about what we did there, please feel free to join our audio programmer community on Discord. You can join at www.theaudioprogrammer.com forward slash community. And with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and end this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you found this helpful for you, and I will see you next time.